Hi everyone and welcome back. In uh, several of my previous videos I have uh, demonstrated some simulations uh, such as the simulation for bubble sort, selection sort algorithms, uh, bootstrap aggregating or bagging and this time I'm going to show you a simulation of a genetic algorithm. So uh, genetic algorithms are uh, used to solve uh, optimization problems. Uh, for example, they are used everywhere where you have a large search space of all possible solutions, but using uh, something like brute force is simply not an option because it would take too long, uh, so too much time, and in order to uh, search through that space more effectively, you would use genetic algorithm. So, uh, genetic algorithms, they have many different variations uh, because, uh, well, let's see here. Uh, genetic algorithms start by uh, generating uh, initial random population of solutions and those solutions are usually uh, not even close uh, to the solution that you are actually looking for and uh, after generating and evaluating uh, the initial random population you would uh, most likely always go into this loop of selection, crossover and mutation. Uh, in the selection process uh, you would uh, well, choose one of the algorithms for selection. Sometimes it can be roulette wheel, elitism, uh, uh, rank selection, uh, tournament selection, which was very uh, popular, and so on and so on. And after uh, the selection process, you would do a crossover. So selection usually, uh, uh, what it does, it ensures to have the uh, best quality solutions uh, that are later on used in a crossover process. In order to get uh, better solutions throughout generations, usually what we do is uh, we perform selection crossover and mutation uh, on uh, most quality solutions. That that's it. That is the idea here. And uh, uh, here we have also elitism that is used to preserve uh, the best possible solutions uh, from uh, previous generation and sometimes for example you can have elitism before selection or let's say after mutation. Uh, like I said there are really uh, lots of different uh, uh, implementations depending on the strategy that you use for genetic algorithm. Also there are as you can see uh, several different uh, variations when it comes to crossover and there are also some uh, uh, variations for the mutation. So, uh, for example, in crossover, you can choose, um, let's say, that uh, what is a crossover? Cro crossover is uh, where you uh, try to create new uh, children based on uh, on their parents. So, for example, you, you randomly select two parents and you mate them in order to create, uh, for example, two children and uh, those uh, children will uh, be created based on the parents genes so for example uh, first parent will, uh, will inherit the first gene from a first parent and will inherit the second gene from the second parent and so on and so on so it's a random process again and as a result we get two children that uh, eventually for example replace their parents in the population and mutation uh, simply ensures uh, to have some random mutation in those genes so after you inherit genes from your parents uh, maybe some of those genes can mutate into something else right that is not inherited and uh, like I said, uh, you can also have elitism sometimes after a mutation and uh, genetic algorithms can also be improved by using uh, various uh, local search strategies. In this case, in that case, they are called uh, memetic algorithms and so on and so on. So there are really a lot uh, of things to say about uh, uh, genetic algorithms. Uh, it just depends on what the problem is that you are trying to solve. and. Uh, well, uh, they are very popular in, for example, in PhDs. I was also doing, uh, I was working with genetic algorithms on my PhD. Actually, I was working uh, on a problem to try and find the uh, source code for the uh, uh, compiler uh, and for pretty much any type of DSL compiler. And uh, in, in that case, uh, I was doing genetic programming because the representation of a solution was a source code or a program. But uh, like I said, uh, when it comes to genetic algorithms, uh, th that is really a, a wide story and uh, definitely worth checking out, especially if you are, uh, uh, for example, having plans on, on going on a PhD uh, in some 
let's say computer science area this can really be useful uh, to know okay so let's uh, get back to our problem uh, in this simulation what we are trying to do here is to get the or find the uh, binary representation uh, of this number and of course we can easily uh, write a function that can convert this to binary but for the sake of demonstration what we are going to do is use the genetic algorithm and in genetic algorithm first we need to represent a, a solution somehow so I'll just open the source code here um, so each solution is some number in the population and that solution is uh, represented by the individual and uh, population is nothing but a set of individuals right and uh, in order to uh, evaluate each individual we uh, need to use a fitness function and the fitness function uh, is very important because it needs to uh, distinguish uh, different individuals in a population uh, by quality and so you would determine uh, which uh, e of the individuals is uh, better depending on the fitness function so uh, for example here we can uh, we are trying to uh, find the binary representation for this number and uh, uh, after generating initial uh, random population or in this case uh, initial random set of numbers we would evaluate each of those numbers and uh, we would try to find how far is the uh, each of the number uh, each of the numbers uh, how far is it from the target value and the number close, uh, closest to uh, the target value would be uh, of uh, a solution that is uh, better or has a better fitness so uh, I have uh, represented this problem as a minimal minimalization problem meaning uh, if the difference between uh, currently best solution and the target value is lower then the best solution is closer uh, to the target value meaning I want that difference to be the smallest as possible and that's why this is a minim minimalization problem and uh, after that uh, we are going into a loop of uh, like I said selection crossover and mutation and inside the source code here which I'll just briefly uh, explain uh, we have a population size and we are doing a tournament selection in this case uh, tournament selection will uh, for example take two random uh, uh, individuals and uh, it can be more individuals not just two uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, if we have two or more individuals uh, the winner of the tournament is the one with the better fitness value in this case uh, the one that is closer to the actual target value and uh, I also have some other parameters like a probability of crossover uh, of mutation and how much uh, elite individuals from the previous population do I want to uh, transfer uh, to the current population because I want to preserve the best individuals from the previous uh, generation. I can also make this a multi-threaded and but that is not the point of this demonstration and this is the uh, maximum number of generations uh, that I'm going to use. Uh, why? Because uh, genetic algorithms uh, do not always uh, well result with the solution depending it all depends on the problem sometimes you will find the solution let's say each time but sometimes you you may get stuck for example uh, in in a search space which uh, does not contain uh, optimal solution but uh, well it, it, you, you only can find uh, uh, the best solution in that uh, part of the search space it's, it's actually called as I remember a, a local optima and uh, you cannot simply find a better solution in that part of the search space uh, and you're simply like I said stuck in local optima and what you want to find is a global optima which is the uh, uh, best solution in the entire search space so uh, what we are trying to do here is we, cre we create a random population and then we evaluate that population and we go into a uh, uh, selection crossover and mutation uh, to try and find the best solution and we do that until uh, our fitness is uh, didn't reach zero meaning uh, it is a minim minimalization problem as we said so we want the difference between best currently best solution and the target solution 
uh, to be minimal, minimum zero, or until we reach the maximum number of generations. Uh, this is necessary because uh, if we get stuck in a local optima, then uh, we could end up looping forever and uh, not be able, not being able to get out of that local optima. So we need to somehow set this uh, termination condition. Okay, so let's demonstrate this. Uh, start. And as you can see here, what happens, uh, actually, this is fantastic, very fast. Uh, we are trying to find a binary representation for uh, this uh, value here. And in the first generation, the best value that uh, he got was uh, this value. And uh, I don't even know what number is this. But the point is that this value here has this fitness meaning uh, it is uh, th this much far from the target value. So what we want is uh, to find a better fitness which is less far from this target value. That's why this is a minimalization problem. And in the second fitness, you can see that he found a better solution which is closer to this uh, target value. And in the third generation, again, closer, closer. And finally, in the 51, uh, generation 51, we got the optimal solution which is, uh, well, the uh, corresponds to the target value. So we can check this. And I'm going to say this to binary. So let's check this uh, binary solution. 0, 1. Okay. Just a second. Okay, and if we uh, transfer this to decimal, uh, we can indeed see that the binary solution that he uh, came across is the correct solution because it, get, it gets this uh, target value. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about uh, the very specifics of um, uh, selection process of a crossover or a mutation process. Uh, that is really an extended story and uh, we could stuck uh, uh, with that story for hours here. But uh, I believe that you can also research it yourself. I just wanted to show you how effective those genetic algorithms are or can be. So for example, if I would check each and every uh, number, I would need so many uh, operations. In this case, this is a very large number of operations. So if I would use a brute force, uh, God knows how much time I would need to find the correct binary representation, because I would need to check uh, each and every possible combination of these genes here, because each of these uh, bits is treated like a gene in an individual. And uh, here we have found a solution in only 51 generation, and 51 generation uh, times uh, 250, that small. So uh, this is the number of uh, 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 queries that we have done. Uh, we can say it like that instead of uh, this many. Right. So you can see uh, how genetic algorithms are effective. But uh, when I start the genetic algorithm uh, second time, you are not necessarily going to get the solution. Uh, you're not necessarily going to get the same solution. Uh, it depends on, uh, for example, you, sometimes you have multiple solutions uh, that uh, are in your search space. Uh, in this case, uh, it was found later on in generation 45. Uh, now let's try again. Fifty-six. Now let's speed this up. I I've said here an animation uh, so we can see what happens, but let's just speed this up a little bit. Okay, so he's acting really good right now, uh, not even trying to, to go into something deeper. Okay, now uh, we have a situation where, as you can see, he is stuck on this value 723, and he was not able to uh, get better fitness. 
uh, this is the uh, example of a local optima so he pretty much stuck in he was not able to find a solution and that's very important when it comes to genetic algorithms uh, they work with random values and sometimes that random value can get you stuck in local optima and you simply cannot find a solution uh, other times you will find a solution uh, that uh, is a good solution but uh, it can be different from uh, another good solution let's say so you never know what's going to happen and the idea is if you don't find the solution one time uh, restart the algorithm and try to uh, find it again and uh, well as you can see uh, we started it again and now it works and it's fairly fast right so uh, like I said uh, genetic algorithms are uh, indeed very good in uh, traversing or uh, uh, searching uh, the, ser uh, the search spaces, uh, large search spaces of possible solutions and essentially are one of the uh, best tools that you can have at your disposal if you are for example a PhD student uh, because uh, many uh, problems uh, especially uh, these type of optimization problems can be solved by using genetic algorithms. Uh, I hope guys that this can be useful for you uh, and uh, well uh, see you soon with another video.